Hi, my name is Sarah McBride and I'm uh, an uh, artist and I teach at Stunning Street Art Centre and I'm going to talk to you today about acrylics and oils, uh, the pros and cons of each. Acrylics, you get all different types of acrylics um, and um, all mediums um, have different binders and acrylics have a specific binder throughout. Um, I use Matisse um, acrylics because I find the colours hold quite well, uh, but there's other different types. There's also Atelier. Now Atelier are a very uh, special type of acrylic uh, because they've got different benefits. Um, you, with acrylic, you, um, unfortunately, they dry quite quickly, which means that you have to be quite quick when you work. Um, but with interactive um, uh, atelier, it means that you can actually use different formulas that they have, different mediums to reactivate um, the acrylics. So that's quite good for that, which means you can blend um, with atelier. Um, Matisse, um, they dry again quite quickly. Now, one of the uh, downsides of uh, acrylics, obviously, apart from the fact that they dry quickly is that they dry uh, darker um, as well um, which I find a little difficult but y you can adjust your painting to to take that in it is difficult um, with acrylics is when you're trying to mix a, the same color again uh, because the original has dried darker and then you're mixing the color again that does prove quite difficult um, to get around the quick drying that's quite that's quite simple you can easily use a spray bottle to keep them open while they're on your palette or another way is to have a wet palette which is a large Tupperware with some sponge at the bottom covered with um, grease proof paper um, and then you put your um, acrylics on there you lay them out and uh, you can just put the lid on and they should last for quite a few days um, so that's got that's good acrylics are bound together with um, a medium and what you can do is you can get an acrylic painting medium um, that is the same sort of binder that is within the acrylics and you can use that instead of water. If you use water the uh, pigment within the acrylic tends to not hold together whereas if you use um, a binder that th this um, painting medium with it it holds together and archivally it's much better um, but you can get lots of different mediums you can get mediums to slow down the drying process speed up the drying process and with Atelier you have to get their own specific mediums that go with it um, and as I said this has an unlocking formula which you after a week you can unlock the painting again I found it a little difficult uh, because I found that often it um, when I use the medium would actually lift the acrylic underneath uh, because it has this uh, the ability um, to unlock um, so I found that a bit difficult um, as I use Matisse um, and the colors in Matisse tend to be quite strong so um, and don't tend to darken um, too much um, there's all different types of um, acrylics though and there apparently there is one that now that they've brought out that doesn't dry darker so we'll have to, to, to see how that one that one goes um, but I, I find Matisse works pretty well for me okay so moving on um, to oils now the good thing about acrylics is you can actually paint acrylics under oils but oils you can um, you cannot uh, paint underneath acrylics why the difference between the two is that acrylics dry by evaporation obviously with the water drying um, but oils dry by oxidization um, so they are a lot slower drying than acrylics um, now so a lot of people might find this a bit difficult but in fact it's really good because it gives you the opportunity to blend um, the oils so oils uh, dry by oxidization um, so they take a lot longer to dry which means that you can blend them which is which is great um, some people might find this difficult because it's very easy when you're painting to get mud um, by all the colors mixing um, but the good thing about oils is that you because they stay open longer it means you can blend you can also buy mediums that speed up the drying process um, which means you can get rid of rid of that problem um, but the, you can leave your oils on the palette for a few days, not a problem, they don't dry out. And you can even uh, put them on some greaseproof paper and put them in the freezer and they freeze and then you can take them out three days later. They defrost within a few minutes and you can start using them again. Um, now again with um, oils there comes lots of different mediums and when I first started out it was quite confusing um, so you've got to find what suits you and your painting style um, so I use a very simple formula um, 
oils are the pigment is mixed with um, a linseed oil or other there's different types of oils so some with um, alkyd oils which dry quite quickly um, or um, linseed oil uh, different types of oil walnut oil um, so you just got to try out the oil that's best for you I use art spectrum which I've got linseed oil which is the binder now I use diff, um, a very simple form of oil painting. I start off with a, a very lean medium. I use uh, a, an odorless one, which is, is because I've got a small studio, I, I can't, the smell of other mediums is just too much for me. So I use the odorless art spectrum one. I just use um, a lean medium. Now lean medium actually has some oil content in there, which means that when you use it, with your oils, it doesn't break down the pigment too much. Whereas if you use solvent, um, uh, I use odorless solvent to, to clean my brushes um, as well, but I, I can use this on the lower layers, but you've got to remember this breaks down the oil content in your um, oil paint, um, so the pigment is, is quite loose. Um, so archivally it's not not so good, but when if with contemporary painting that doesn't really matter so much. It depends whether you want to have your painting surviving for 400 years. Um, now, one of the most important things with oils is fat over lean rule. This is really, really important to follow uh, because otherwise you'll find that your oil um, paints will crack. This means that you use, a, um, a, in the bottom layers, the oil can, content is less. So you can use your solvents and your mediums um, to thin out the paint and do very thin washes and layers um, and then you build up to thicker layers with more oil content. Now this is because it dries by oxidization it means that the thick paint dries really slowly so say for instance it can take six months to a year to dry if a year for very thick paint um, so as if you were to have thick paint and then paint thin paint over the top as that thick paint dried the top layer the thin layer will start to crack now this can occur even if you use the same medium throughout your painting uh, because what happens is if you don't actually formulate how much of the medium you're using each time in each layer you will find that the layers will start to, to crack and, and bits fall off so and I have seen this happen so just uh, to be aware of that that's the reason why you can't do acrylics over the top of oils because the oils dry the acrylics would crack as well but acrylics underneath is fine now just remember if you're using linseed oil to thin down your paint when you're doing the top layers um, I use refined linseed oil because it's actually a lot clearer um, because the, some of the darker um, mediums actually will stain your uh, whites which leave a sort of a yellowing effect um, you can get lots of different um, mediums um, go and have a look test some of them out uh, some are in gel form that you mix and you use your palette knife to mix them with the paint and, and liquefy them. Um, also there's ones with Demar varnish in, all different types. So be aware of that. As I said, that's why I use very, for me, just a very simple form of oil painting and so far so good, no paintings have fallen off. Now the other thing, um, glazing techniques. Um, again, you can get different glazing mediums as well. That and glazing is just very thin layers of paint that you put over the top of your um, painting to alter the colours, maybe to darken the shadows off, um, or to warm some areas up. Um, and again, you can use the linseed oil to do that. Just use very um, small amount of this with the uh, with the pigment, a small amount of pigment with the linseed oil, and then you can paint that on. Now, there's lots of different techniques that you can use while you're painting. Um, things like dry brushwork and things, and you will find that with acrylic and oils, uh, you will they don't work quite the same way. Obviously, because acrylics dry quickly, when you're doing something like dry brush, you'll find that it will dry quite quickly, which makes it difficult. Um, whereas with oils, you've got to make sure your underlayers are very dry before you start doing your top layers. Otherwise, you're just going to land up with um, sort of a, a muddy mess. Uh, so just be aware, aware of that. It, it's literally trial and, trial and error. Um, different types of oils, again, um, 
you again the cheaper the oils the 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 less the pigment that's within the oils um, I use art spectrum I don't go and buy all the uh, series there's a different series one two three four depending on the different um, types of pigments and but the series four can be quite expensive um, so just be aware of that. I, I actually just use the Spectrum Crimsons or, um, or Spectrum Cerulean colours, um, not as expensive and I don't find that th there's any problem with them at all. Um, if you look at the back of the oils, there's a little indications here, a little triangle on the back there, um, a black triangle on different um, paint, uh, different brands will have different markings but on, on here there's a triangle that means it's semi-transparent um, if it's got um, a, a blocked in square it's actually opaque and if you look at the back of this one it's actually got a white uh, square which means it's transparent now that just means that you can paint this thinly over other colors um, and those colors underneath the layers underneath will shine through obviously if you're using opaque that will block it out uh, of course if you're putting white with anything that's a, an opaque color so that will block um, completely cover out okay so um, the other thing we to talk about is mediums again as I said there's lots of different mediums um, if you look on the internet every different oil artist will have different mediums I had to do a lot of research looking at local artists seeing how what they use um, and it, it's pros and cons again the, of, of the way you paint um, if you want to paint properly um, um, you know distinctly uh, like the the old masters you could land up with 20 jam jars with different um, ratios of oil to solvent content and use each one for different layers because I use the lean medium um, what I do is just use more lean medium on my lower layers I tend to work on a formula of um, sort of um, very uh, thin watery sort of uh, for the lower layers and then the next layer will be sort of a melted butter consistency the next layer a, a, a cream sort of a thickened cream and then obviously pure paint at the end now what happens when you want to do detail right at the end um, and you can't get that thin paint well then I use the linseed oil which is the binder in the paints and then I can use that to um, thin down the paint a bit um, and of course it's keeping the fat content you have to remember as well if you paint thick with paint that is uh, again is uh, fat um, and if you paint thinly with um, oil paints um, it is actually still considered thin um, so I can get the detail with the linseed oil um, you have to remember that it dries a little bit shiny linseed oil um, so you'd be aware of that but that can be rectified by oiling out which is a technique um, because what happens is um, different oil um, paints have different oil contents um, which means that when they dry some might dry a little bit shinier than others so what you do is you can just oil out which is using a very thin layer of linseed oil over which you um, can brush on then wipe most of it off um, and then what will happen is all of those paints will come up to their normal normal color and you know a, an overall equal shine um, this is a lot of artists actually oil out before they start painting because they want to see the true colors of all the oils um, but you do again do have to remember it, uh, it dries a little bit shinier but that's a way of rectifying that sort of sinking that you get um, with with oils um, now with oils and acrylics you can use the same brushes that's not a problem but with oils I tend to use a more bristly brush because uh, they can but I'm using it quite roughly if I'm doing different techniques um, but a synthetic works just as well a soft synthetic uh, works I don't buy don't necessarily buy expensive brushes um, just cheap ones will work but you just have to know that the canvas will wear down some of the brushes I never throw any of them away because even though they're worn down they might come in handy for doing a certain technique uh, I've even got a small brush with one hair which I use for eyelashes so just keep keep all of those and if a toothbrush gets you the uh, Thing you want on your painting then use um, uh, a toothbrush as for the palettes um, I've already explained the acrylics wet palette um, for oils I use a glass palette 
Um, so to construct that very simple, just a piece of hardboard, plywood, um, and then I just take out a piece of glass out of a normal uh, frame. I take the glass out, I put a piece of grey paper underneath. Now the reason for that is because colours um, against grey show their true colour, so it's much easier to see the colours that you're mixing against a grey background rather than white. Um, so I put that underneath and then literally just tape it all the way around and I and it's and then just you can buy a normal paint scraper to just scrape the oil off um, and a bit of solvent then to wipe it down it's a very simple palette um, but otherwise you can you use any palette you can even use a, a plastic plate you know you don't have to go to an expense to, to make a palette the next thing um, one of these uh, which is a mild stick. Now you can use this for, for, for painting with acrylics or with oils. It's just a very good way to put up against a painting and then you can lean on it um, to get the detail. So that's uh, another little handy thing um, to know about. With acrylics, because they dry quite quickly, they're quite difficult to get off your palette. Um, so basically the best thing to do is, as soon as you've used them, um, to go and wash your palette. The other thing, um, because you can use your wet palette, that's, that's, that's good. Um, if you want a normal uh, flat palette, you can actually cover it with foil or with some greaseproof paper and then you can just screw that up and, and throw that in the bin. Um, you will find if you're using other palettes, some of these plastic palettes, um, it will glue to the side and it is really hard to get off. Uh, some of the acrylics will peel off. Um, but otherwise you're going to have to get a scourer to, to scrub them off. So your best bet is either to use the wet palette, which will keep them open for a while, um, um, or put some foil over your other palette. Now when it comes to varnishing your paintings, um, or, or for acrylics I'd at least leave your painting about a month before you actually um, varnish it. Um, you can just use a normal um, varnish and there's different types. You can get spray cans, you can get paint on ones, you can get matte satin. It depends what finish you want for your painting. When it comes to oil painting, slightly different. Because it takes six months to a year to dry, your best bet is um, to, if you, I actually haven't, don't varnish my paintings. I use a retouch varnish, which allows the oils to dry underneath. So it will give you the effect of a varnish. It will seal your painting so that it doesn't have the effects of, you know, dust and everything on it and you can wipe it down, but it allows the paints underneath to dry. Now you can get that in spray form, on paint on form. Um, now, I haven't actually, I don't varnish my paintings unless somebody on a commission asks specifically to have it varnished. Um, then I'll say to them, no, if you want the painting, come back in about six months or a year and I'll varnish it for you. But, um, but otherwise, just retouch varnish will be fine. Now, if you are using very thin paint and using the solvent, um, your paints are going to dry quite quickly because obviously the solvent will evaporate. Um, it's the oils that take longer to actually dry. Um, so if you're using your paints quite thinly, then they'll dry quite quickly. You've got to remember that it, to get a painting touch dry in oils, you're looking for about, a, a, if it's got lots of medium, it'll be dry within, um, sorry, um, uh, the odorless solvent, it'll be dry, with it can be dry within an hour if you're using it very thinly. Now, if your paints are thicker, um, and you're using less of your solvent or your medium, um, they can take a little bit longer to dry, two, three days before they touch dry. Um, so, and you've got to remember if you've used white, that takes a lot longer to dry. Um, so you just be aware, aware of that. Um, now, coming to canvases. You can use the same sorts of canvases for acrylic and oils, and there's all different canvases you can use. You can get books of canvas paper for oils um, and acrylics. You can use wooden um, canvases. I have to say that the more you pay for your canvas, the better canvas quality you're going to get and you will notice the difference And uh, because you'll have a much uh, better stable um, surface to paint on. If you are buying cheaper canvases, um, then I would suggest you buy some gesso, um, which is a, a, like a, a ground and you can get coloured grounds or just normal white ground and you just paint a couple of layers um, of that on. Now if you're using a, a wooden board, you can actually, if you want the wood to come through, you can actually get transparent gessos, which are good. Um, but if you're using white gesso, just do about two or three layers and remember to 
just sew the back as well. So if you're going um, to your hardware store and you're going to buy some plywood, I suggest to do about two, three layers on the front and at least one on the back just to make sure that no moisture is absorbed by the wood. Um, now, um, first layer upwards, second layer across, third layer up, and you can sand down in between if you like to get a very smooth surface. But I find with oils, because they tend to be quite slippery on that, so you might get some strange effects. So I do actually keep mine a little bit gritty so that it, it grabs onto the pigment. Um, but I've, I've painted on cardboard so you know put some gesso on some cardboard and and, and paint it away on that um, it's just obviously archivally the the better the canvas the the longer your painting's going to last another quick tip with oils um, unlike acrylics which you cannot then get off the canvas very easily unless you scrub them um, which I have some of my students have, have put them in the sink and scrub them off um, I always suggest to carry on and persevere with the painting because you learn from your mistakes if you persevere. Um, but if you want to, with oils, if you find that you've made a complete mess, um, you can, and because they don't dry very quickly, you can actually just get some solvent and you can wipe them back um, and then and start again. If it's a cheap canvas, you will find it will stain the canvas a little, but the more expensive canvases, you can wipe it, wipe it off. The other thing is if you um, are doing a drawing underneath, um, you, can, uh, you can actually, the solvent will actually lift the graphite, so remember that. Um, so you can seal the painting underneath if you like, seal the pencil work uh, before you actually go on and then use your solvent. Just a little thing to remember about any mediums that you're using is a lot of them are toxic, okay? Um, so you've got to remember to wash your hands regularly, um, which of course we all are doing at the moment anyway, um, but um, to wash your hands regularly, to try not to put your brushes in your mouth, which I have been caught doing, and uh, and if you're gonna have a sandwich, wash your hands before you have a sandwich. Um, even though the solvents and mediums are actually odorless, you've got to remember they are slightly toxic as well. Um, um, so with oils and uh, you can get cadmiums and the titanium and that and they can be poisonous um, you can use gloves um, uh, you just put gloves on not um, that's that's fine um, to, to stop that um, and just be the other thing to remember um, a quick quick tip that I have is really not to be tipping the solvent down the sink either. Now what I do is I just have jars, uh, uh, different jars, and I use the solvent to wash my brushes in. And if you leave that then for a few days, the pigment that we're, uh, is in it will actually fall to the bottom and you can then pour off that uh, solvent which will be clear again into another jar and you can use it again so you can just keep using it and, and, and using it. It will yellow a little bit after time but you can then use that just to um, thin down your under layers of your painting. Now for those of you that have used other mediums and are a bit worried about using acrylics or oils, don't be don't be scared of them. They're they're really simple, and you just have to remember as an artist, uh, when you paint, once that layer's dry, and if it doesn't work out, you just do several more layers over the top and uh, to get the effect you want. Um, acrylics, um, really simple to use not a problem you can use them like a watercolor if you like so um, by using lots of medium or with water so not to be uh, uh, afraid of those they're very very simple that you will find it a little bit frustrating that they dry quickly for certain techniques um, but but really but really really fun um, with oils a lot of people are scared of oils I was scared of oils but I love the traditional old artworks so I wanted to have a go and I have to say, once I used oils, I didn't go back to acrylics afterwards because the, the versatility of them, the fact that they don't dry quickly means I can blend, I can, I can mix the color again because I know that the color that's actually on the canvas is the color that I, I need, so I can easily mix the color again to match that. Um, so I found that I didn't actually go back to acrylics for a long time. Um, so I don't be afraid of oils, they're nothing to be to be scared of. As I said, there's plenty of canvas, you can go buy another canvas if it all messes up. And I, I assure you, my first few paintings did mess up.
So, um, you know, just persevere with them. Don't be, don't be scared of them. Um, and if you use this very simple oil painting technique, um, I, you shouldn't have a problem. It's when you go into a shop and you see all these different mediums um, that are available, it can be quite scary. Start off simple and work your way up depending on the style of painting that you have.